stream. Thanks to Network for Good with Michael Agard. How you doing? Good, 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 good. Thank you so much for having me. It was a lot of fun speaking it today. It was such a great way to start the day. You got high energy. It was very funny. It was awesome. So <laughs> thank thanks you, for thank doing you. that. And confirmation bias, we were just saying like, we're in the confirmation bias and confirmation bias breaking business. You know, yeah, as, yeah, as yeah, trainers, yeah. we're trying to yeah. constantly do that. And it's such a good reminder for us when we do qualitative or quantitative research ourselves, especially because we're teaching others, like we have to be very cautious. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's a great reminder for us. So. Yeah, I think so. It's... Uh, no, I love it. I think it's a fascinating subject, and it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's really interesting how much it actually uh, impacts our decision-making process, yeah. and, and it's, we're kind of hardwired to do it. And so you don't even know. Yeah, exactly. That's why it's so dangerous. Yeah, that's why <laughs> I thought your loop analogy was great, because yeah. it's not you know, the most revolution, but you're just cognizantly saying, am I doing confirmation? And just by thinking about that... Yeah. It gives you a chance to fight against it. It's like simple but brilliant. Yeah, it's, uh, thank you. Yeah, no, it's interesting because you, 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 it kind of, yeah, you have to train yourself to kind of like stop for a second and right. going, am I just autopiloting now? Right, exactly. Am I just, you know, putting the story together to fit the hypothesis really? Yeah. Uh, or am I actually, you know, really doing research and really trying to learn yeah. something new here? Am I actually, um, you know, telling the true story that the data is telling or, right, or right. kind of where am I going here? Yeah. So I, I want to move over and talk a little bit more about landing pages, yes. which is something that you know very, very, very well. And you showed uh, a couple examples, but you didn't kind of dissect them. So what are some of like the, the kind of basics, I guess, of, of landing page optimization or some of the things that you look for or, or teach or train? Uh, like where does someone start when they're like, man, what is landing page optimization? Like where do I start? Well, I'm, I'm very much research driven, so a big part of my process revolves around, uh, you know, uh, well, I guess for you guys it would be donors. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's often the users or customers. Yeah. Uh, you know, surveys and so on, interviews, anything really, uh, reading, uh, you know, reviews on Amazon, hmm. uh, you know, running feedback polls and stuff, you know, the, the, the whole shebang really. I've, I've, lately, I've been doing uh, a lot of, you know, full website optimization. Hmm. And you know that you could, I can easily spend a couple of weeks doing research. You know, yeah. so you go through analytics. You know, you figure out everything from kind of like, you know, are there any browsers that are buggy? Over to you know, step drop analysis where people, uh, you know, uh, leaving the funnel and so on. We do all the qualitative research. You know, and and, and all that background information I think is really really important to mm. be able to put together. Like the you know, you're, you're striving for the the ultimate landing page experience. Right. But. So the research is one thing, but as far as kind of like approach, uh, I think w one of the mistakes that I think a lot of us make is uh, when we're trying to optimize a landing page, often we just sit down and look at the landing page itself and go like, how can we make this page better? Yeah. Like, but you need a lot of context to make it better. Right. So one of the things I always say is like, your landing page is part of a, is always going to be part of a, a bigger funnel or, of course, or yeah. a bigger story. It's just one step. So. You know, there's multiple layers. So, what happened before? What was the ad you clicked, for example? What motivated you? Yeah. You know, and uh, and then when you get to the landing page, that's it's not done. You know, you have to get someone to take an action. And yeah. even if that's filling out a form that's on the landing page, it's still like a second step, a second funnel step. Often, uh, you know, maybe the the um, the, the uh, there's several steps to the to the conversion, and so maybe the problem could be several steps later. So we could spend right. a lot of time trying to optimize the landing page. <laughs> right. failing and to understand. not even the problem. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, you, so for example, doing a funnel analysis and understanding like where the problems are yeah. helps us actually have a strategic approach. Yeah, and, um, that's a great point. And so, yeah, even the little things like, for example, uh, uh, you know, going through an analytics and understanding, like what what is the 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 user scenario here? Like, is it desktop? Is it mobile? Is it yeah. you know? Is it is the main browser Chrome? Is it you know? Uh, is it iPhones and so on? You have to figure out what the main scenario is. Yeah. And you know, stuff like that is again just opening it up so it's not just what you're perceiving on the page. Right. 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 And uh, for example, if you're doing usability testing and so on, it makes a lot of sense to understand your demographics so it's yeah. the right people. It makes a lot of sense that you're actually then doing the user test on the right devices and so on. So it reflects reality again. Right. And not kind of, you know, what you kind of figured out in your own little uh, yeah. uh, marketer's bubble. Uh, that's a good point. It's one of the reasons why um, validating experiments on a main donation page, right? So you go to any nonprofit website, well, almost any nonprofit website, top right corner, donate button, and then you go to a, what we call a main donation page. It's actually very difficult to validate tests because literally everyone from who knows where, who knows what demographics, all see the same page. Yep. 
And so one thing that you might tweak works really well for this audience segment and then works poorly for this audience yeah. segment. And so it's really difficult. Whereas in a campaign page environment where it's like we control the ad yeah. or the email, that's a way better testing ground because we know more about who you are and where you're coming from and can form more clear hypotheses, right? Yeah, totally. And, uh, and in the other scenario where you're sending a lot of different kind of users to the same page, uh, then you need a lot of, 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 of traffic you know, to be able to segment. You Which know, that is creates very difficult for nonprofits as well. Yeah, exactly. So that's a completely different problem. But overall, also what I think is important to look at uh, on landing pages, what I uh, uh, spend a lot of time, you know, uh, um, trying to figure out is kind of like, is there, where, where are the gaps in, in the story, oh, kind of in the natural progression and in the information hierarchy and in the visual hierarchy and so on. Hmm. I'm looking for places where it kind of, uh, there's a break in the story, basically. Yeah. You know, there's like, okay, this doesn't make sense to me. Uh, I don't know what this means. Um, you know, you you set me up to expect one thing, right? Uh, but actually, this is what you happened. Now, yeah. So basically, a, a lot of expectation management, I think, is really important. Yeah. And for example, you know, you might ha uh, uh, you might want people to fill out a form. For example, mm -hmm. uh, I do a lot of lead gen. So one of the things I often see a big mistake there is. Once people fill out the form, then they get the information. Like an agent is going to call you, and this and that day, da -da 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 -da, this uh -huh. is how it's going to take place. This is how whatever the demo, or whatever is going to work. But you know, they needed that information on the step before, right? In connection with to the know. form to actually make an informed opinion. Otherwise, yeah. you're like, I have yeah. no idea what's happening here. So, I think the 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 uh, the, the the framework of kind of um, managing expectations. Yeah for me, makes a lot of sense. Well, what's interesting too, what we see in the, and especially in the fundraising context, is if you don't set the expectation clear enough in the, the traffic that you're driving to the landing page, you may get an increase in traffic and clicks, but it's not quality traffic because you haven't set the expectation. Yep. Like, we're asking you for a donation, so this page is a donation page. So when we see if it's like, learn more, or like, find out, or yeah, yeah. stand with us, and people go, oh, inch, click, and they're like, what? No, I'm out of here. Like it is expectation setting, and yep. sometimes you have to move that up, like you said, to make it more clear. I, I want to ask you a question about yep. tools because yep. you mentioned the quick, like five-second test, uh -huh. which maybe people aren't necessarily familiar with, or things like you know usability hub, or like what are some of the tools that you use to actually get some of this qualitative or quantitative research on landing pages? Well, um, bread and butter is analytics. Like I don't know. Mm. I just I have no idea what I would do without analytics. It's <laughs> like I feel completely naked without it because yeah. you know that gives you, gives you all the you know, the insight as to what happens under the hood. Yeah. All the stuff that you just cannot figure out by looking at the landing page. Yeah. But as far uh, what but but then also I think we have a tendency, especially when it's about online optimization, to prefer the uh, quantitative stuff like ooh a lot of numbers but and then maybe ignore the uh, the, the quantitative stuff and yeah. the quantitative stuff is so important so as far as tools uh, well usability hub i think is great because it's you know easy to do a little kind of uh, sniper <laughs> yeah. you know mini kind of usability test so for example the 5 second test i think is awesome because it kind of taps into you know that intuitive reaction yeah. that's hard to gauge otherwise uh, so five second test, you know, um, you, you show, you recruit your panel and you show them a screenshot of a landing page, for example, for five seconds, and then they have to answer questions afterwards. Mm -hmm. Super interesting what they kind of take away from the page, yeah. and often it's quite shocking. And you could say like the ultimate test is if they cannot answer the question, what do you think this page was about, after having looked at it for five seconds, well, you, you kind of have a problem. You know, right. you might want to look at that again. It's a good pulse check. Yeah. Um, and then. Uh, session recordings, I think, are interesting. Mm. Uh, definitely on the uh, uh, on the qualitative side, there it can be extremely boring. Yeah, scouring through <laughs> hundreds of, of videos, but you know some of the different tools out there have some nice, uh, you know, search options and stuff, segmentation options. But I use that a lot, um, especially if, if for like funnel checkout funnels and stuff like yeah. that. It's really interesting as far as trying to figure out. There's often a little bug or something, a little weird UX thing that's yeah. kind of stopping people from going all the way through. Uh, I love feedback polls, hmm. uh, you know, little sniper surveys. Uh, I think they're, they're really Like cool. after uh, they've taken an action or like well, while I they're mean, on the Well, I mean, multiple page different or? places. It could also be upon landing on, on the landing page. It really depends on the context and what you're trying to figure out. Gotcha. It might revolve around, uh, you know, motivation stuff. Mm. You know, so maybe f for, for nonprofits, you might be asking questions about what their main motivation for, you know. Yeah 
for donating is. Or you could be asking them kind of like, you know, maybe you want to find out, did you come here today to ready to donate? Right. Or did you come here to get more information? Right, right, right. And stuff like that is, is, is pretty simple and high level, but it's, it's quite interesting because sometimes it's completely different than what you expected. You're mm. like, oh, wow, like 90% are not ready yet. They're just looking for information yeah, and so they don't know okay, where to so get it. Yeah, yeah but right. we're like plastering the whole page with like, donate now and right. stuff. So I think that's, mm. uh, that's quite interesting. And, um, and would you do that on the way out? Like if someone is like exiting a page or something like well, that. Well, it depends. I don't. I'm not. Because I think. The, sorry, the yeah, context yeah. is people are like, okay, they're ready to donate. We don't want to show them anything that will distract from donations. Yeah, so when do we show them or yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's so. There's a little bit of a trade-off. There's, there's. You're going to introduce a bit of friction with any, you know, kind of interruption. But I think if obviously you have to do it right, you have to be careful. But I think the payoff is massive. Yeah. And depending it's on what. Yeah, and depending on how much traffic you have, you know, again, a feedback poll is, 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 is qualitative. So we're not looking for the inter eternal truth. We're looking for, you Insights. know, some indications. Yeah. Uh, indications. Um, so, but I, I'm not a big fan of exit intent. Um, and I think especially for feedback polls, it's not the right way to do it mm. because you're actually asking someone to give you some information and it has to be reliable. So if they've decided to leave and you're kind of bugging them on the way out. Right. In my experience, it's better to have a delay yeah, a on the point. page. But it also depends on context. So you don't want to fire at the second, you know, why haven't you donated? You know, like, <laughs> right. ah, I just got here. Yeah. So often I find a, a delay of 10 to 30 seconds, mm -hmm. depending on the context, is good. Right. So because then you also know that people have kind of had a little bit of time to settle and actually, you know. Yeah. Have, have or, or the highly motivated, I'm making my donation, let yeah, me go. Exactly. You don't bother them. Yeah, totally. Right. They're totally. gone. It's great. Yeah, but the other people that are maybe more deliberating. Yeah, that's really good. And then um, last question, I hear a bell ringing, so we might have to wrap up soon. But I know sometimes with um, clients who have small traffic where it's like, you know what? It's going to be impossible for us to yeah. validate an experiment. Sometimes we'll use something like Usability Hub to just kind of get at least some type of insight into like, hey, 100 people saw this thing and like one understood what you're talking about. Yeah. So, I mean, is that a good substitute if you have yeah. no chance, you know, or at least to get some kind of... I think so, and the most important step I'd say is, is actually getting to the level where you understand that you, you, know, uh, you have to have a certain amount of traffic before yeah. it makes sense to test. And for the longest time we've been hearing this horrible advice like you know, everyone should split test or if you're not split testing it's uh, safe to say you're not getting the, the most out of your marketing. Yeah. We're like, no, 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 it's not mandatory. It's one tool out of many and we only use tools when they're helpful yeah. and if you don't have enough traffic to get proper data back then it's not helpful at all. In fact, it's the opposite. Right. You know, you, you might get some really, really bad data that's, you know, doing the opposite of, of informing you. Yeah. So, yeah, the next best thing then is, you know, comparing periods and so on. And research is always important, but it's extra, extra, extra important when you can't validate, you know, your hypothesis afterwards with a straight up A-B test. Yeah. Then you really have to be careful about doing, you know, your, your, your research carefully. Yeah. And basically, that's also validation. You're, you're just trying to validate it as much as possible up front before you launch it. Gotcha. Um, so um, w one of the other things, sorry, I was just getting yeah, no dis distracted there. Um, so, so with small traffic, I mean, this is the thing that we have to balance with, right? Because uh, we do a lot of experiments. We try to prove and validate what's working. But then it's like, um, how do we just tell this organization what to do? So we very carefully say, we, we aren't saying that this is going to work 100% for you, but there's no way that they have the ability to run, you know, yeah. 16 tests. And so we basically say, like, here's a starting point, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and then the, the, the testing thing with your too small is interesting because there is something in a culture of testing, right? Of even just saying, we don't know the answer. Let's try to figure it out. Yeah. But that's a good reminder that you don't always have to do an A-B split test. There's other ways to do research or uh, have curiosity and the, yeah. we don't have the answers, right? That's but, a good but, reminder. But all, all that are steps in, in validation. All of it is. Uh, and I think that's the, main, that's the main point, that you have a mindset where you're actually curious and you're yeah. actually like, huh. Which goes like, back to confirmation bias. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, and I need to understand this uh, deeper and uh, just, you know, a bit of humility in the sense that you're like, I, you know, I probably can't just kind of like right. guess this stuff, <laughs> you know, from, from the ether or whatever. Yeah. So I think that's the first step is basically just being curious yeah. and saying, you know, I, we have to do some form of validation to understand this. Yeah. And then or even just being yeah. honest, like this is a guess. Yeah. This isn't fact. This isn't truth. Because there are times when it's like, whatever, I have too much time. I can't do research. I'm too small. But to not convince yourself that 
because what you've always been doing is fact and just say, I, I'm going to shoot from the hip, but acknowledge this yeah. is a shot from the hip or something. Right? It's when we convince ourselves that the things we're doing are like working or finding the evidence that this works. Like that's where the real danger. Yeah. But also, like if you think about the word optimization, you know, that, you know, if you look it up in the dictionary, it doesn't say optimization is just to keep on doing what you used to do because <laughs> you think that's the right thing to do. It's right. like basically the opposite of, of, of optimization. Right. And I think like, you know, I, th I think the marketers of today is, is not, you know, I think in the 60s and stuff, you're supposed to be like, oh, this genius who could tell the future and stuff like that. And right. oh, I know this better than, you know, the, the, the target audience knows it themselves and stuff. Yeah. That's not part of my reality anyways. And, you know, if, if people expect me to be able to, to, you know, predict the future, I'm like, I, I can't do it. Yeah. Like, you know, I, but we but isn't that actually yeah. free? Oh, yeah, very much. Right, yeah. to just say, like, hey, I don't know. Yeah, for sure. But I know how to make progress towards figuring it out. But I think also you need to uh, achieve a certain level of maturity, I think, as an optimizer mm -hmm. before you're comfortable just being very clear about your limitations. Right, right. Because I think, for uh, me personally, I, I had a lot to prove uh, earlier, I think, and I, I wasn't comfortable enough. I just wasn't experienced enough to yeah. be honest about it. So I think sometimes you have to, you know, feel like you have to cover up a little bit. And yeah. I, I don't feel that anymore. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm very straightforward about where my strengths are and what I, where I need help. Yeah. And maybe you actually go through and like, you have a bombed experiment and then you realize like, oh, it really wasn't that bad. Yep. And here's what I learned. So then that fear of failure like goes down over time and you're like, I actually don't mind being wrong that much anymore. Whereas in the early days, it's like a big deal, right? And at, at some point you want to be right. <laughs> <But> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, that's if you're what wrong I, all the time. Maybe you're in the wrong industry. When, when you're into your twentieth experiment for the for <laughs> yeah. the client, and you're still, you know, just for making them less money. <laughs> at some point, you're gonna be like, ah, you know. Okay, yeah, oh. yeah. But that's also, so. you know, I I, I, I also try to um, be careful also about the pro projects I get involved with because mm -hmm. also. I want to do a little bit of vetting and some research up front to understand Smart, if yeah. I feel like I can actually, you know, be a positive contribution. Yeah. And sometimes you look at the case and you're like, this is going to be really hard because right. you're, you're, you, you have no u unique value proposition. This is completely generic. It's exactly the same as yeah. everybody else is doing. And, you know, we can tweak away, but that doesn't change what that you're fundamentally doing exactly yeah. the same as everyone else. That's is. a really good point. So too. maybe the right thing for you is just to crank up the budget. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, we'll often see that with organizations who are like, oh, we're going to test uh, button color oh, or something yeah. like that. And it's like, okay, you got some other, you know, high yeah, leverage exactly. issues and not all things are equally weighted in terms of how it contributes to a conversion. But that's also why the research is so important because then otherwise, right. if, you, if, you, if you don't have, you know, your research as a roadmap showing you the right way forward yeah. or, or at least helping you find the way forward and validating what the way forward is, then it is going to be shooting yeah. from, the, from, from the hip. Yeah. And um, yeah, in my experience that, you know, you, yeah. It's like flipping a coin. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. How do you repeat it? Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking time in the live stream. Yeah, of course, man. It's a being with pleasure. us, uh, sharing on confirmation bias. We really appreciate it. So we are going to go back to the main stage here. Thank you so much for watching on the live stream. Again, brought to you by Network for Good. Please keep asking questions throughout the day and we'll answer them. And thanks again, Michael. Thank you.